Good day to you, one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. I'm saddened, shocked, and overwhelmed by grief because, according to Gene Simmons, <laughs> Rock... Rock is dead. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. I'm often asked to remark on that uh, piece of wisdom that uh, Gene Simmons uh, espoused in uh, 2014. He just said that uh, Rock's time had come to an end and it was indeed dead as a genre or an art form. And actually, when you look at some of the stats, you kind of think, well, actually, maybe he had a point. So, Because according to Billboard, even though 2021 saw a feast, a veritable banquet of successful rock albums from the Foo Fighters' Medicine at Midnight to Iron Maiden's Senjutsu, uh, not one rock album was listed in the year-end chart of the 200 best-selling albums in America. And America, I think that's one of those territories that you would think would be sympathetic towards rock. I mean, look at the contribution that American bands made to rock, especially in the 80s, for example. And also, when you look at the charts today, um, if you look at the rock and metal singles chart, I clicked on this um, earlier just to see what was in the rock and metal singles chart, and I'll see if you can see if you can recognise a pattern that emerges. In at number one, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Number two, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Number three, Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. That's an old song as well. Sweet Child of Mine, No One Bites the Dust, Living on a Prayer, Can't Stop from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Thunderstruck, We Will Rock You, and Back in Black. So there's a lot of Queen, a lot of DC, a bit of Bon Jovi, a bit of Guns N' Roses, weirdly a bit of Goo Goo Dolls, so that's good for them, well done, and a bit of Red Hot Chili Peppers, but nothing that's been released probably in the last 10 years, I don't think. So what's happening? Why is, why is it, why is it, it was never thus before? Before it was, um, I'm sorry that I'm speaking in this medieval way, but I feel like I'm talking about the past a lot when I'm referring to rock as a successful genre. Um, Alice Cooper explains that he too thinks the genre has entered a new era. He thinks that rock music's lack of mainstream popularity is making the genre more rebellious again, similar to how it was first perceived in his youth. I think there's a good bit of truth in that. You think about bands like Amel and the Sniffers and the Starcrawler and all these bands that are actually doing like not they're doing little venues and playing in weird parts of England. I saw that the Star Starcrawler were playing in um, Hebden Bridge, that's down the road from where I lived when I was at college in Huddersfield. So it's kind of like um, the end of the line, really, and and it's not the hugest place. It's not the kind of venue you'd expect you'd expect an established American band to come and do. But there are bands who are actually doing this circuit with this with this with the places that are not undersold, but actually doing the work and building up their fan base by doing an outreach project. And that's kind of what you have to do. Um, I think the reason why that's an acceptable approach is that it isn't about doing the thing that's um, popular and the thing that's the, like, like the form of guitar music that's uh, prevalent and gets you into the charts and makes you probably feel like you're doing something cool and what everyone else is doing that's that's not satisfying believe me hand on heart if you're standing in a room full of other people that you enjoy playing music with regardless of what genre you operate in the most fun you can have is playing classic rock stuff because it's just I mean, it's preposterous in the right way. It has the same pathos and bombast of... I mean, you know what rock is. It's, it's loud and it's fun. I think that for my generation, we grew up listening to our dad's rock. And that was the stuff, you know, like uh, stuff like Queen and ACDC from the 70s and 80s. And um, then you sort of... You, the rebellion that you do is against your dad's type of music and you sort of try and reduce it and... and if you are a virtuoso, in the 90s, you would hide your light under a bushel. And it's always evolving, you know, it never dies, but it always evolves. So maybe it's just cocooning at the moment. And we're waiting for something that's incredibly feel good and fun to come out. I mean, think about what all those bands in the current, <laughs> the current rock and metal top 10 have in common. Queen, Goo Goo Dolls, Guns N' Roses, Bon Jovi, Red Hot Chili Peppers and ACDC. I mean, all of those bands are just really great fun to go and see live i'm sure of it actually i've never seen the goo goo dolls i've seen all the others though and yeah it's just a brilliant night out roaring along to emphatic powerful refrains 
guitar solos that take your face off. You know, it's fun. It's just fun stuff, isn't it? And that's never going to go out of fashion, is it? Or is it? Oh, shit, maybe it has. Alice Cooper said, uh, we were on the outside looking into the party and we weren't invited to the party. It was more pop music and dance music and disco. I think it's kind of healthy that rock bands now are not number one, number two or number three. We're back to the point of being rebels again. That's brilliant, actually. It's a great, great observation. So the alternative has become actual rock music. I think there was a period in the 80s when rock was very much mainstream, you know. And I think people got annoyed with it when the hair got bigger and the guitar solos got more difficult to play. Maybe the spandex got a bit tighter. I mean, it's not always a bad thing, is it? Addressing Simmons' rock is dead comment, Alice uh, Cooper says that he does agree to an extent, but only in a financial sense. I don't think rock is ever going to die. I think when you talk about hard rock, like the Stones, the Who, that's the only music that's lasted. Grunge was here for a while, punk was here for a while, emo was here and all this, but hard rock bands just keep going. So if you're in a hard rock band, you can just go as long as you want to go. <laughs> I think that's really true. I mean, I was thinking about Iron Maiden. You know, that's a band that doesn't have any... Well, they had one, I think they had a number one single, maybe it was Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. I seem to recall that it was kind of like, um, took a bit of campaigning on behalf of their fan base and, you know, rock fans in general to get something that wasn't just some pop music to number one at Christmas. It was years ago. I think I was, must have been about, I must have been 10 or 11 or 12 and just loved that moment, really. Um, but apart from that little moment when, Iron Maiden sort of lifted their heads above the parapet and said, we're mainstream now, just momentarily. Um, they always operated as the alternative. And I think now, because of the perseverance and having been just plugging away at it, they're, they're a stadium rock band all over the world. They can do whatever they want. And they, in fact, they do do whatever they want. They have a huge production. Everybody loves going to an Iron Maiden show. And it's really fun to go and sing along to those songs. But they never really had huge hits did they so i think that's just a, a testament to the perseverance really if you're playing this kind of rock music and you love it just keep doing it and your time will come my friend your time will come oh do i look like a jedi in this jacket i suppose i do don't i will come no come your time will and that's yoda isn't it new gen is considered the new rock genre that's now emerging dismantling rock's best qualities uh, they've formed a new hybrid from its constituent parts merging metal with emo pop r&b and whatever they want so I'm going to do another video about uh, new gen because uh, I feel like that's um, that's like if you think about like the st like I keep coming back to the 80s because I feel like that's the that's the pinnacle of rock being considered you know the the pop you know I don't know the the mainstream really um, with your Bon Jovis and yeah your Bon Jovis remember when um, the Final Countdown by Europe came out. That was everywhere, wasn't it? So, I mean, I think, but that wasn't the same, that's not the same genre as the stuff like Queen and, you know, the things that were at top of the charts in the 70s that was rock. It's, it had evolved, you know, and it had become more about the production, the spandex, the hair, the smiles, the teeth, the pointing, the... I'm going to say it, the misogyny, there was a bit of that in it. Um, and of course that had to go, you know, there was, there was a new attitude that, that sort of um, flooded the, the, the rock scene with, um, with grunge. So it's constantly evolving and uh, new gen not, might be the thing. So I will do a video dedicated to the new gen bands so we can um, establish what it is that makes it great and why some sort of people who love the heritage and legacy rock stuff aren't really into it. Is rock music actually allowed to evolve in that way? Or are we resistant to it? Are we hesitant to accept these new influences? And if so, why? It doesn't affect any other genre. Pop will just do whatever it wants to do. That's sort of determined by, you know, what level of sewage you're prepared to pour into your ears. That's what pop is, you know, it's just what people are making on their laptops. <laughs> you know, I think Stock Aitken and Waterman was, would you consider that a peak really, considering some of the stuff that's out at the moment? He says, as a cloud uh, scuds past, and I just give it a little shout. Pop music shit! Shit. I mean, it's just, it is shit by definition. No, yeah, by definition. So why aren't we allowing rock to evolve to, to become something that can defeat it and emerge from the shadows to rise above the tide of uh, actual raw sewage that is the charts? 
Who knows? Maybe there's hope for us yet. I'll do uh, an episode where I'm wearing something less black so that I can uh, celebrate the rebirth of rock in the form of new gem. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Fear not. We will rise once more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos and don't stop believing. That should be in the top ten. It's not. It should be. Probably has been. Lots of love to you guys. See you on the ice.